Hello and welcome to today's video which will explore the subject of SIPOC diagrams. The SIPOC diagram is a relatively widely used business analysis methodology but it's often underappreciated in terms of just how useful it can be. For example if you're familiar with Lean Six Sigma you'll probably have seen the SIPOC diagram on most project charter checklists as part of the defined phase for a DMAIC problem solving project. But it is an item that trainee practitioners often do because they feel they have to or because it's on that list rather than because they believe it will be particularly valuable or revealing about the process it's applied to. Personally I, I think the opposite is generally true. Certainly in terms of value for effort the SIPOC is right up there. It's relatively simple to understand and apply and it can be completed pretty quickly to give a high level view of what's going on in and around the process. There are a number of variations on the theme in the way SIPOC can be used dependent on the nature of the process area and what we're trying to achieve but I would advise its use in almost all circumstances as part of the background preparation for a project or to ensure that the boundaries of what we are going to do are clearly defined. SIPOC provides a simple high level view of the process, its context and where it fits within the wider supply chain. Dependent on the detail involved this can then be used by those not involved in the process to gain an overview of what that process is and where it fits or by those owning or involved in the delivery of the process to start to understand and then plan for performance improvements. In this video we will explore the logic and theory behind the methodology and then explore a number of different ways in which it can be applied. With each variant we will talk through the specific additional intelligence provided and the main use cases that each are best suited to. My name is Carl and I'm a business improvement greybeard. Before we can explore the logic and use of the SIPOC diagram, it's essential that we understand and embrace the concept of the process. This is a very simple but useful way of compartmentalising our business world and capturing a clean boundary around our areas of responsibility. We can apply this simplification of our business at pretty much any level, from the company as a whole right down to our own personal job scope and responsibilities. Everything that we do is contained within the little box labelled process. It's a natural next step from this process box to then consider the things that we need to receive into our box in order to do the things we do, those being our inputs and then the things that we deliver out from our box or our outputs. Our inputs will include any application forms, orders or demands that we receive and any materials or consumables required for the operation of our process or for the production of our products or services. Those very same products and services then become the outputs produced by and delivered from our process. This concept forms the initial building block for many modern business management philosophies and performance improvement systems. Many analytical tools and techniques simply expand out the scope of the boxes shown or the detail behind each of those boxes. One of those natural developments of the process concept is its expansion out into what is called a SIPOC diagram. SIPOC is of course an acronym with the letters in turn representing supplier, inputs, process, outputs and finally customers. With the SIPOC diagram we're simply ex exploring where each of our inputs are sourced from, our suppliers, and who receives each of our outputs, our customers. The suppliers and customers in this sense being either internal to our organisation, so maybe a, another internal department or section, or external companies. The SIPOC diagram provides a simple representation of the supply chain 
in which we operate, created by the step-by-step -step flow of links from supplier of inputs that are processed into outputs that are purchased or received by customers. The example shown on the screen illustrates a conceptual flow represented in the SIPOC diagram in its simplest form. Diagrams like this can be used in what might be called a level zero SIPOC, but the uses are quite limited. For example, I sometimes use a simple uh, SIPOC like this within a quality procedure just to illustrate the context of the process described within the document. Often though, in reality, things are a little more complex than in this example, where there are only one of each element of the flow sequence. For this reason, there are a number of variations on the theme in the design of SIPOC diagrams that allow us to explore these kind of situations. Often, for example, we might have a number of suppliers, perhaps supplying a wide range of different inputs. Similarly, we may produce or deliver a range of different products or services, or have a large number of clients. The example shown on the screen illustrates the exact same conceptual flow we saw in the previous example, but this time expanded out to cover where there are multiple occurrences of each of the details feeding into or out of our process. One thing I should mention is that the construction of a SIPOC diagram, particularly if anything more complicated than the level zero, as, as we saw on the previous slide, should certainly be completed as a team activity. Dependent on your organisational situation and where the process you are considering fits, you might also benefit from the inclusion of your suppliers or customers within the, this development team. The time and effort invested is still relatively small and certainly if your suppliers and customers are internal departments within the same organisation then they really should be included. The involvement of a competent facilitator might also prove worthwhile, certainly the first, or first time or two that you do it. This methodology can be really useful in capturing that overview of the business activity and maybe already start our thinking on where within that diagram we might be having issues or performance concerns. Another similar but more commonly used methodology is the process flowchart. This method is more concerned with what's actually happening within our process box. Many organisations, though, will already have documented procedures and work instructions, and these will often already include process flowcharts. These will generally be describing the sequence of activities completed to transform our process inputs into process outputs in order to meet our customer requirements. Process flowcharts have a number of valuable uses within the workplace. They're often used to capture a standard, verified methodology for achieving the necessary work within our business areas. They can then be used as a pretty effective training resource. And then they can also be used as a pretty useful template against which we can capture any uh, process measurement needs, processing difficulties, quality problems, or bottleneck steps. We can, however, incorporate the logic of the process flowchart directly into our SIPOC diagram. This allows us to achieve many of the same benefits, although generally only the high level process flow. This incorporation of our high level process steps into our SIPOC diagram is a, is a very commonly used enhancement. The general advice would be to keep things relatively simple and high level, with a maximum of, of six or seven process steps being quite enough. We don't want to lose the key advantage of the SIPOC in providing a simple and clear overview of our process, its interactions and its contacts within the supply chain. The example shown on the screen illustrates a typical SIPOC diagram with process flow steps included. You might commonly see these either in the form of a table or in a matrix like the one above. 
Sometimes a table form is simple and will just be a list out of each of the lower level details in, for example, the inputs area or the customers area. But often these will be aligned and linked as shown in the example so that each individual relationship is clearly indicated. By way of a worked example, the SIPOC shown on the screen could be that of the six step process for making a couple of cups of instant coffee. We start off by filling our kettle in step one using the input of water supplied from our water service company. In the second step, we boil our kettle. In the following two steps, we then add two further inputs, sugar and milk to our cups. Both of these are supplied from our local store. We then pour in the boiling water and then in the final step we stir until complete. The cups of coffee, our outputs, are then supplied to our grateful customers, you and I. Like with the previous example, capturing these steps and the interactions involved in inputs, outputs, suppliers and customers provides a great oversight of what is going on in and around our process. It might already reveal some missing or ineffective elements and can, offers give, uh, can often give us a good insight into where things might be going wrong or where it might be sensible to look a little deeper. Another tool in a similar vein to the SIPOC is the i diagram. Again, i is yet another acronym, this time standing for Inputs, Controls, Outputs and Resources. And these are generally illustrated around the four faces of the process box. And as you can clearly see, three of those five boxes are already common with our SIPOC diagram. With this methodology, rather than extending out up and down the supply chain, we're doing the same thing but out sideways to explore more of the context in which the process itself is having to operate. The i diagram achieves this through exploring the potential controls that apply constraints or demands on the process and the resources that will be needed in order for the process to operate well. Controls can often manifest in the form of specifications and standards or legislative requirements such as environmental compliance needs or the restrictions on the storage and use of personnel data. But these can also be expanded to include the influence on our process from competitors or from the evolution of new and potentially disruptive technologies. Resources are a common source of business performance problems. Generally, we can categorise these resources into four categories, those being people resource, materials, equipment and our working area. Those resource problems could be in the context of either capacity issues or capability constraints or consequences. In some circumstances, it can be really useful to incorporate the additional content provided by an i into our existing SIPOC. As already mentioned, we're already most of the way there once we have our SIPOC diagram, but the additional intelligence and insight provided by the i can often certainly prove more worthwhile. The example shown is obviously showing the incorporation into a very simple level zero cycle. But again, the same, the same principles apply for incorporating into one of the other adaptations we've seen. The only cautionary advice here is to make sure we keep to those principles of it being simple and clear. And don't let this additional complexity get out of hand we might lose more than we gain. Do think about the likely benefits of the additional complexity to your own process situation. The final variation in SIPOC deployment that I've used in the past is to combine our SIPOCs one after another into a sequence, following the movements as we go from one business area to another at the high level departmental process level. I've used this variation generally when working with very large organisations 
where departments and functions may have become somewhat isolated or insular over time. It's not uncommon at all in, in large organisations, often with a, a very long history, for communications and service levels from one internal department to another to have become somewhat ineffective. Departments and what they do evolve over time. Leaders, past and present, exert their own personalities and ambitions on the organisations and the customer supply relationships amongst equally senior peers can often become a little strained. There are generally two ways to go about creating this kind of SIPO. We can just continue to expand out the logic from the department at the start of the organisational business process, generally sales or order processing, and move on department by department where the outputs from the first department become the inputs to the second and so on. In the example shown, I've combined the output and input boxes and, and merged those to represent this crossover into the next department. Each yellow process box in this kind of example represents a, another department within the organisation. The other option in a, into how to do these is to first generate the individual SIPOT diagrams for each department independently. Uh, say for example on an, an A3 sheet for each one and then locate all of these sheets onto a larger roll of paper or, or a convenient working wall before linking up all of the outputs and inputs in this bigger picture. I found this can be extremely revealing where departments will often discover that there are users of their outputs, maybe data sets or reports, that they were completely unaware of. Or where there are departments producing outputs that nobody actually needs or uses anymore. Having this high level view of the departmental deliverables and interactions can also any, highlight any of those areas of mismatches in expectations where we might adopt service level agreements or performance metrics in order to achieve and deliver improvements. So in summary, the SIPOC diagram is a quick and relatively easy methodology to understand and to use. To get the best value from the methodology, it should really be developed as a team effort and where possible include participation from your suppliers and your customers. There are quite a number of options in how we deploy the SIPOC methodology, each of which we've explored during this video. Do give some thought to what you want to know about your process area and your overall ambitions in developing the SIPOC. The most appropriate of the variants to you should be pretty clear, but if not, just start from the simple straight line level zero SIPOC sequence and keep adding the other elements from the variants you've seen until it serves the purposes that you need. If things are not perfect, perfectly clear at the start, then uh, I recommend that you construct your SIPOC using post-it notes, maybe using a different colour for each of the SIPOC steps. It's then pretty easy for you to add or move the contents as the team settles on different ideas and as they model the diagram. Well, that's it on the topic of SIPOC diagrams. I hope you found the video interesting and informative. If so, do please click on the subscribe button below so that you can much more easily find our videos uh, on future business improvement areas. If you do subscribe, Please mention this in the comments below and I will send you a quick thank you and introduction message. So I look forward to seeing you all on our next video. We do hope you found today's video interesting and informative. If you did, please click the like and subscribe buttons below. This really helps in getting our videos prioritized and found. Thank you and ciao, the Great Beard Academy.